Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 24, 2024. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week. Without a doubt, big moves happening in the sky now. Boy, is this a very special time. And it truly is so special. And that is because eclipses are special. And this week on Monday, we are going to have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra. Part of what makes eclipses so special is that they represent a moment of alignment. They deeply involve the nodes of the moon. And this is where life, the universe, is going to attempt to bring us into alignment with what it is that the soul promised itself it would do before it incarnated. And as part of this, there can be dramatic events that take place. Now, if you are somebody who's already listening to your life, already striving to live in alignment, it may not be as dramatic as it might be for others. And yet, there is still the promise here, the promise of aligning with a higher, more loving vision for your life, which is always the higher intent of the universe. But there's something else that makes this lunar eclipse very special. And that is the fact that Pluto is going to be speaking in supreme harmony with this eclipse. And that speaks to an easy power. It speaks to an understanding that whatever it is that's changing, whatever feels like it comes out of nowhere, not only are we able to address it, but very quickly we're able to understand how to hone our own power to have things go the direction in which we desire. There is a deeply transformative quality to what is at play here. And what changes now very likely isn't just going to be compartmentalized to one area of life, but rather it has the potential to facilitate sweeping changes in multiple areas of life for us now. Think about what happens during an eclipse, in this case, a lunar eclipse. Well, we have the light of the moon, and then the light of the moon is obscured. It goes away unexpectedly and then slowly comes back. And similarly, given that the moon is a symbol for our emotional reality and what we're understanding, especially on an emotional level, it is as if we, on the one hand, saw what we were feeling or, or something that our emotions were very caught up in in a particular way. We saw it one way, and then in an instant, we realized that things actually might be very different, especially how we actually feel about a given situation. And this is about truth coming forward. And I say truth with a capital T. That can be a truth about ourselves, a truth about another but it ends up being a game changer and it changes our understanding of what now we can do to make things better. Sometimes what we can do to make things better is surrender, is turn it over, is just allow other people to be whom it is that they desire to be. And other people really are key here. Partnerships are key because this is a lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra, after all. And that is a sign that has to do with partnerships. It has to do with genuine sharing. It is the energy of Libra that, in a sense, represents a mirror of sorts. When we meet other people and we have a one-on-one -on -one exchange, what we ultimately are doing is looking in the mirror. Now, that reflection that we see isn't necessarily about what they see when they look at us. It's about what we think they are seeing. It is about what we are projecting onto a given moment, a given situation, and what that is trying to teach us about ourselves. Back in September, I had the great privilege of realizing one of uh, my bucket list places to actually visit it and experience it, and that was the Salt Flats of Uni, because this salt flat is called the Mirror of the World. It is considered one of the great natural wonders of the world. Salt has for millennia been considered a magical substance that brings with it purification and protection. And whether that is protection from outside elements or whether that is 
purification itself serving as a protective mechanism. And that purification could be of other intentions or of our own, of our own wounding, of how it is that we may end up in certain situations that are murky. It is salt that has been thought of as sacred. And we see this again and again throughout cultures, throughout centuries. I found these salt flats to be incredibly powerful. And when I went, I was carrying a lot of stuff. I remember like my own lessons and the things that I was moving through and, and striving to understand about myself. And I went to the salt flats and I remember as I got there and I took a breath in and looked around and there was an endless, literal, flat sense of salt everywhere, almost like being on another planet. And lots of people have described this space in that way. I took a breath in and I felt something shift within me. And it was a moment of purification. And so I was there starting at around sunset, right? We're, we're starting to get there, but still it was daylight. It was out. Um, and then slowly the sun goes down and then it got dark. And I was wondering what is going on? How come we're still here? And then, little did I know, a part of the tour included being able to take nighttime photos. And this is where, as it became dark, I saw the sky in a way that I had never seen it before. I tried to take video of it, but it just didn't do it justice. I only have still photos. But as I looked at the sky being reflected onto the salt and this mirror of the world reflecting the sky, it made it seem like we were endlessly just floating in space in many ways. The sky was alive. The sky moved. The sky was revealing stories as it was moving moment to moment. And every moment there were shooting stars taking place. And as I looked at this sky, I thought about how it makes total sense that the ancients would look at this sky and they would see sacred stories unfolding before them, that they would look at the night sky and the constellations as revealing mysteries and as deeply connected to what was happening with us on earth. I have heard the criticism of astrology that says, oh yeah, like the universe cares about your life and what you're doing. The universe doesn't care about that. If you ever get a chance to see the sky this way, alive, breathing, revealing its stories and its mysteries, you understand that absolutely the universe cares for us, the universe speaks to us, and the universe wants us to know ourselves. It wants us to know the highest unfolding of ourselves as embodiments of the universe itself. And this was so powerful. It was worth the journey. It is the energy of Libra that holds many icons to it. And one of the icons, of course, very uh, famously, perhaps most notably, is the scales. And when you think about scales, of course, we think about balance, evenness, right? But this is also the scales of justice. But justice is different things to different people. But there's another mythical creature that has been associated with Libra, less known, and it is called the Sylph. And the Sylph is a magical, airy being. And it speaks to higher forms of beauty. Although some version of Sylphs has existed through millennia, through centuries, really around the world, the way that we conceptualize and understand them today is actually a lot more recent. Um, in particular, I'm thinking about how the Rosicrucians uh, used self magic to tap into this, to allow those winds of change and grace uh, to bring truths to light. And in other ways, they tapped into the magical power of the sylphs. When we look at the sylph, the sylph has a characteristic as well oriented around freedom. Libra is an air sign. All air signs, which are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, they have a desire 
to know themselves, even as they know themselves in relation to others. These are the social signs. They know themselves in context to other, but it is still self-knowledge that is important. And the element of freedom shows up again and again as important when we look at these signs archetypally. And the sylph embodies this. Now consider that sylphs are comprised of clouds and air and light. If you have occasion to spend time with children, or you may remember your own journey as a child, laying back on the grass, looking up at the sky and the changing shapes of clouds and the stories that would come forward as a result, how in so many ways we could see whatever we wanted to, or we could see how it is that there's an unfolding of a very vivid tale and it's emanating from within us we're imbuing it onto the sky. It is the energy of Libra that is associated with not necessarily the earthly beauty of earthly Aphrodite as Socrates described it in Plato's Symposium. As Socrates made that distinction between earthly Aphrodite and celestial Aphrodite, it is Libra that encapsulates these very concepts of higher beauty, of balance, of symmetry, the beauty that we find in architecture and ideas and art, not just being something that we look at to be visually pleasing, but something that we look at to have an experience that restores balance within us, within our soul and our psyche. It reminds us of the sacredness within us. And that doesn't mean it has to really hit the, the nail on the head, as they say, right? It doesn't have to be a, an art of an angel to remind us of how we are celestial. Just about anything can be gazed upon as sacred and remind us of our own sacredness. Now, going back to the sylph, sylphs are often uh, depicted as female, exceptionally beautiful, uh, exceptionally gracious in their approach and how they communicate and especially interested in ideas. They express higher forms of beauty, not just through physical representation and notions of intellectual connections when it is that they appear to human beings. All of this is celestial Aphrodite herself. Now, Venus is an interesting character. We talk a lot about Venus here because, of course, she's goddess of love and she's got all these layers of understanding to her, gracious and irresistible and so beautiful. And But Venus was not necessarily innocent. She actually had a very competitive part of her nature. Now, with Libra's rulership of Venus, it is said that Libras tend to be more beautiful than the rest of us, right? Because their faces are just more symmetrical. And I have found that to be the case much of the time. But what we have this week, I think, is especially inviting. And even if you don't have any Libra in your chart, don't worry about that. Because in one way or another, this becomes about acknowledging beauty where you find it and acknowledging higher forms of beauty, the beauty of ideas and of balance in your own life, but how it is that balance also provides focus. As much as this energy is airy and bright, that trine of Pluto to this eclipse says there is determination here to live it. And I think about the phrase of um, a velvet glove over an iron fist. And what that means is a very sweet and soft approach that ultimately is meant to knock out contenders, is meant to help you to be on, on your game, help you to be on top in some way, help you to engage with any moment that you are hoping to transform and to know that you have the power to do so. That is the gift of the trine of Pluto. So yes, be sweet, be nice, be soft to yourself and to others. But I think there's also an element of compassion here as well. But all of it ultimately is done for a purpose. And if you don't know what that purpose is just yet, it will reach you very quickly once it is that this eclipse hits on Monday. But think about those times when 
gazing upon the sky, whether it's clouds, whether it's air, whether it's the night sky, but by gazing upon it, something shifted within you. I've had that experience many times where it feels as if the natural world itself is speaking to some sense of inner awakening that I'm able to realize certain things about my journey, about my path, about who I am, about where I am in my life, based on what it is that I am interpreting by looking around me, including looking at the sky, day or night. That is part of the realization we may have right now, but it's the realization that ends up shifting something within us, powerfully so. It may feel like a click, it may feel like a penny dropping. It may feel like, wow, I can't believe this was right in front of me this whole time until right now when it is so clear. And what is so clear is how you really feel, how another really feels about how satisfying or emotionally rewarding a certain situation or person or place or thing is likely to be or has been for you. And as the truth is revealed, it serves as a moment of transformation. It is a catalyst moment, reminding us that the truth may always be there. And yet until we're ready to see it, it just won't reveal itself. Very often people are the deliverers of great wisdom. There is a phrase that says, out of the mouth of babes. And what it means is that those speaking very innocently, very often young people or children, but really I have found anybody out there can have this innocence, that's for sure. Age is uh, uh, sort of irrelevant in this. But something could happen. Someone could say something. It, it may be something that they didn't expect to say, just an off-the-cuff remark. It might be something with greater intention. But there's something about it that ends up being just the thing we needed, right? It's, it's innocent. It's not intended to be malicious at all. And yet it's the way that it hits you that matters. And in this way, other people, especially those that we're engaging in one-on-one, -on -one, very spontaneously or deliberately, that can end up delivering some very powerful bits of information to us that make all the difference, that help us to see ourselves in relations to others and to the universe differently, perhaps in an instant. And that is the catalyst. It is trines of Pluto that remind us of how much power we do have. And as much as we have moments of feeling powerless as part of the experience in life, there's also real moments of empowerment that make us feel like we absolutely are at the forefront of the changes we wish to experience. That's what this eclipse is meant to remind us of. I did mention, though, compassion. And the reason I mentioned compassion is, consider that this eclipse is in the sign of Libra. The ruling planet of Libra is Venus. Whatever's happening with Venus in some way is going to help us to realize the potential and the promise of the eclipse that much more. And this week, it is Venus that is the power player that is doing the most and the most important things as well. It is on Sunday as we start this week that Venus is going to be in the sign of Pisces and she will be all week. And this is a part of the sky, a sign in which, according to the ancients, Venus really likes being in. It's here that she's able to bring forward her very best qualities, higher love, higher compassion, um, a sense of really allowing herself to feel enough so that genuine love and connection can be found. It is the immersion of self in another person that allows empathy to grow that much more. But Venus is especially strong right out of the gate for another reason as well. And that is on Sunday, Venus will align in harmony with Jupiter. 
And right now, Venus and Jupiter are in what astrologers call mutual reception. What that means is they are being hosted by each other's signs. So let me make that more clear. It is Venus that is the ruling planet, not only of Libra and the eclipse, but also of the sign of Taurus. It is Jupiter right now in Taurus that is the ancient ruler of Pisces, where Venus is. And so you can see here where it is that Jupiter is very much at home in Pisces, and Venus is in her home sign of Taurus, they are switched right now. So they're living in each other's houses, or more accurately, they're passing through each other's houses. That in and of itself strengthens both of them. It means that whatever's happening with Venus in some way is going to speak to the realization of how we understand what's happening with Jupiter and vice versa. But then you add that these two are speaking, and they're speaking in harmony. And their energies become that much more magnified. Add another layer that these are the ancient benefits. According to the ancients, it is Venus that is the lower benefit, which means blessing. Jupiter is the higher benefit. And these two speaking magnifies a sense of blessings that much more for all of us out there. Venus especially receiving the energy of Jupiter because as the two of them are speaking, Jupiter is the planet that's the slower moving planet. It's the further out planet. And therefore, according to the ancients, it's more powerful. It's going to be more dominant in that conversation. Both are already super strong for all the reasons I already mentioned. But then you add Jupiter being more dominant, Venus grows that much stronger. And that means Venus as ruling planet of the eclipse, whatever's happening with Venus is going to bring us back to the realization of the power and the transformative quality of the eclipse itself. It is Venus in that super compassionate energy of Pisces that ultimately is going to lead us to understand our one-on-one -on -one alliances differently. It is Jupiter in a very practical, earth-oriented energy. It is embodied Aphrodite, earthly Aphrodite, according to Socrates. It is here that we have Jupiter that is going to help us to understand that love is something that, yes, we feel, but it's also something that shows when it's actually there. And a lot of these energies to me say, believe in love in all of its forms all of its forms. Yes, we put an emphasis on romantic love when we talk about love. And yet there are so many types of love. There's the love that we find in our families. There's the love we find in our friendships or the families that we choose. There's the love that we find for ourselves, the love for our lives, the love for nature, the love for imagination, the love for those things that we consider not nature, right? And yet they're valuable. They are a part of us as well. The love that we might have for those qualities that we like and respect about ourselves and in other people. And the love that we might have for a divine wisdom, a divine unfolding. Even if we don't know exactly what that is or what that's going to look like or what that's going to be, especially in the fullness of time, that is not for us to know. But that doesn't mean we can't love that it is there. Because we can. We can love that even if we don't know, there is a higher wisdom in the not knowing and it will be revealed in perfect time. A part of what we might not know, especially as we start this week, is what the blessing of that eclipse energy is meant to be for us. And yet, once it arrives, once we know it is a massive turning point moment. In an instant, we're going another way. In an instant, we're having a new understanding. And it can change the trajectory of our lives for a very long time to come. And I don't say that lightly. That is the power of a Pluto trine, a lunar eclipse. And a lunar eclipse in Libra in particular, it might show us many sides to a situation or a person or a story. And yet ultimately, the person, the situation, 
the story, the belief that really matters is our own perception of it. And when that changes, everything changes. When our perception changes, we're able to then recognize where our power is. And boy, once we do that, do we ever take a shot and just knock it out of the park? As we navigate further into the week on Thursday, Venus will speak in harmony with Uranus in a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. This is an easy conversation, but it also empowers us to take action, to make things even better. Now, a very immediate understanding of this energy is that it tends to represent lovely romantic surprises, right? That's pretty straightforward. Uh, the planet of surprises, which is Uranus, is speaking harmoniously with the planet of love. And so, yes, there could be a measure of delight there. But when you consider how intimately connected Venus is to the eclipse energy, because it is the ruling planet of the eclipse, well, you can see here that this can also bring with it fresh insights, new understandings, and surprise changes that we react to very quickly to make things even better, to magnify the blessings possible with that eclipse energy. Keep in mind that once the eclipse takes place, we are in a period between eclipses where the ancients believed that the veil between the worlds was especially thin. It's that much easier to recognize our spiritual lessons as they're playing out among us and in front of us. And it is the fact that this energy of Venus and Uranus perfects once we're officially across that line, officially in eclipse season, that to me says this element of how the eclipse is meant to bring with it a spirit of change, a kind of change that brings with it a greater engagement with life, with freedom, a greater sense of connection to whatever it is that our truth is. Just when we think we know it, we might realize we don't until we do. But it is ultimately from that place of surprise that we're able to tap into the power, not only of the eclipse in and of itself, but again, that trine of Pluto. It is Uranus that is the ruling planet of Aquarius where Pluto is now. There's this deep interconnection to the tapestry of what is playing out in the sky for us. And a part of what is playing out now is saying, as you get to your truth, it changes your relationship to everyone around you and just about everything. You might see it in a lens that's a lot more empowering and especially empowering of you being more authentically you going forward from here. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It is a valuable and meaningful astrological moment. Well, I am going to say, of course, it has to be the eclipse. Now, here's something to keep in mind with eclipse energy. As a general principle, now, of course, what astrologers advise isn't always going to be the same across the board. We are not a monolith. But as a general principle, for the most part, Astrologers generally advise that eclipses are not necessarily energies that you're going to tap into consciously. A, a new moon, for example, tends to be a great time to set about some intention of what you want to begin. A full moon tends to be a great time to set about an intention, maybe do a ritual of what it is you're hoping will manifest. But eclipses are about aligning with a higher, more loving vision for our life. And a part of the wisdom of life and of the human existence means that we don't always know what is for the best, what is higher, what is more loving. And that sometimes what looks like it's not necessarily higher actually takes us to those places that are even greater than anything we could have planned for ourselves, than anything we had imagined before. And it is eclipses that seek to bring us into alignment with all of that. You consider how active Venus is now. There is going to be some sense of awareness as to what could be transpiring. And yet, when we know, it is still going to feel like, wow, this is the truth. The truth of what I've been feeling, the truth of what I've really been wanting. 
And once we know our truth, we can't help but take action to support it. That trine of Pluto says there is profound transformative power. A moment could serve as a catalyst that could change so many areas of life so quickly and for the better. On the world stage, we may come to see some powerful examples of diplomacy or changing relationships and changing understanding of partnerships and what a healthy partnership is. But these lessons could be taken on more personally as well. As we understand what it is to relate to others differently in ways that are more healthy, that are more empowered, and ultimately to see our interactions with others as a very important mirror that ultimately is helping us to accept some truth about ourselves. And where we like that truth, we can celebrate it. And where we don't, we have tremendous power now available to us to move towards meaningful change. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it helps the channel. All of it helps the video. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. And if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week, especially how Venus is speaking to the eclipse for you in your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com. There are expanded exclusive video scopes for as low as just $3 a month with choose your membership rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs underway right now as we speak. March programs are in full effect. We have Celeste Brooks teaching on Moon Mastery, the one and only Zamboni Funk teaching on using astrology effectively. My own classes right now on outer planet transits. This week, we're going to be looking at uh, outer planet transits to personal planets. And of course, an incredible speaker series happening right now as well. Uh, thank you to all of you who've signed up and are signing up for the individual classes as well. Now, this coming week, we are going to have our big dog live, the one and only Maurice Fernandez, a world leader in evolutionary astrology. He is going to be giving a talk live on the upcoming Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. This is one of the peak moments of the year, and he's going to look at it from an evolutionary astrology perspective. We're so fortunate to have him as part of the speaker series. So you can sign up for that now. And after that, we are going to have what is a rescheduled class of Fernando Gamirez, and he's going to be teaching on solar arc transits. The classes that have already taken place, you can get them now as instant downloads as well. You can learn a whole lot more about all the programs underway right now at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. I'm so grateful for it. Of course, it is going to be this coming week that new programs are going to launch for the May season. And we have super big news, super big dogs. I'm so excited about it. So there's lots to look forward to there. So keep an eye out to our newsletter and social media and here as well on the community page and so much more. Really looking forward to sharing all that with you. I am doing 90s Heather Locklear here with the makeup and the hair and everything. <laughs> and you know I love it. You know I love glam. And I really uh, am amusing myself that much more in Southern Ontario right now. It actually is pretty good being home. I am really enjoying it. Yeah, mom's cooking. Mom's cooking is really, really good. <laughs> and what else? Well, thank you. I really love all of you who've shown up for my classes. I love all of you who comment, who share. I'm so grateful for you. And I'm really looking forward to the unfolding of this journey that much more together. And thank you for seeing me as part of your sacred journey. Uh, incredible episodes will be coming up of Synchronicity Web TV that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. So be on the lookout for that as well. And thank you again.
I'm so grateful for you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.